Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Rick Ryman with TDI, and our topic today is virtualization of the call center through distributed architecture. And presenting with us today is our partner, Dialogic. Jeff Dworkin is a segment marketing manager with Dialogic, and we've been partners with Dialogic for over 15 years. In fact, been so long we don't know exactly when we started doing business together, but it's been at least 15 years. Jeff's going to be presenting us some really valuable information on virtualization. And with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Jeff, and uh, we can get started. Sure. Good afternoon or good morning to everyone. Again, I am doing this. I see. I think we are leaving everyone unmuted. So if you have a question along the way, you don't have to use the WebEx raise your hand button. You, you should be able simply to call out, and I should be able to hear you. Just want to do a quick introduction to Dialogic for those of you who might not know who we are. Again, I don't feel a real need to um, read you this entire slide. But for those of you, uh, we started out uh, in the CTI business back in the mid-'80s. Grew up, we're a public company at one point, then acquired by Intel about 18 months ago. We were spun back out from Intel, purchased by a company called Icon, which then changed its name to Dialogic. And since that time, we have uh, acquired the additional assets of Cantata, which you may know they were the roll-up of the Excel uh, switching group, Snowshore Networks, and uh, the Brook Trout product line. We also have our Media Labs group and our signaling group, so those are all part of Dialogic Worldwide at this point. So we have a, a real breadth of uh, experience and products to meet a lot of different needs. Our products do come in uh, a variety of shapes and sizes, it's depending on whether what your actual needs are. Uh, that goes all the way from uh, software-only solutions that could run on a general server. Uh, we also have board-based solutions. That, uh, again, you take our boards, our hardware, plug it into your servers, and we also have in integrated platforms and appliances, such as our media gateways are all purpose-built appliances that just are single task items. Again, that way you can define your problem space, and then you can pick your solution from a variety of products that are all come out of the same worldwide support and distribution network. All right? So, topic for today is virtualization. Just want to go through a quick definition of what we are talking about here when it comes to contact center virtualization. We're limiting our discussion to the term as it applies to the contact center. So we have within the contact center space, we do have virtualization as it applies to making a lot of physical or uh, disparate physical locations appear as a single contact center. So you may have uh, East Coast, West Coast, or a worldwide distribution of your contact center, but to make them all look like a single contact center from the user perspective and from the management perspective. That's one kind of virtualization. We also talk about agent virtualization, which again, looking at it from the other side, this is where your agents could be worldwide. Even if your core is all in one place, you know, you have a single center, you could have agents logged in from home or from remote offices using VOIP to create a virtual agent pool, so it doesn't matter where they are in the world. And then we have the ability to virtualize the network, which means we can actually appear to have a point of presence in many places around the country or around the world, but we are leveraging other people's infrastructure and services in order to create that virtual footprint. You, know, you, you may have a single call contact center in one location with all your agents local, but you can have VIDs from around the world being focused into that single contact center. So hopefully we all are clear on those three different kinds of virtualization that we're talking about. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about the core. And again, if, I'm, if you want to be more technical, free, please feel free to jump in. I have both a marketing and an engineering background. If you want to do some drill down or if I've gone too deep technically, please feel free to interrupt and tell me about that. Going on with the virtual core. So what has created this need for, for virtualization? So we have our first bullet point, which, uh, again, uh, a lot of companies are expanding or acquiring other companies. A lot of contact centers are rolling up. So you have your agents or your technology dispersed around the world. All right? And again, these tend to be task-specific. Uh, you know, contact centers a lot of times are designed to be task-specific, so you have to deal with that. Then what happens is, as you try to expand your service layer, you end up with the skill sets uh, or your uh, specialized knowledge trapped in a location apart from your from your core center. So you want to be able to leverage those contact center, those uh, subject matter experts, uh, no matter where they are in the world. And again, 
it also brings a lot of management challenges. How do you effectively manage and motivate agents who may not be, they may be at home, they may never see another, another agent or another employee. How do you keep them on the ball and what, uh, what kind of techniques can you use to motivate those, as, those kinds of folks as opposed to the people who tend to sit in a bullpen where you can reach out to them on a regular basis. So we're going to go in and do a little technology here. Again, try not to be too high level. What you see here in this drawing is what we call the typical contact center. That's uh, the big box in the center there is a, is a PBX, which is connected to the public switch telephone network. And there, the solid lines are traditional PDM, old style, non-VOIP telecommunications connections. And you can see from the PBX, each agent has a connection. The fax machine has a connection in the lower portion of the screen. And over here on the left part of the screen, you can see those are all our application servers, whether they be fax or IVR, ACD. These are all technologies which you may see in a traditional contact center. So everybody has a connection to the, to the, PB, to the PSTN via the PBX, and everybody has a, a data connection, or most of the objects other than the fax machine, have a connection to the WAN, which could be the internet or, the, or a corporate network. So that's, your, that's sort of your starting point, uh, where we're going to move forward from there. So what happens is when you get into a, a situation like we're talking about is you may have three, four, or five of these types of situations or these type of technology islands all over the world or all over the country, but they, they can't talk to each other. Maybe they can send email back and forth. Maybe you can do some instant messaging between agents because they, they're using a public public type instant messaging uh, product like uh, AOL Instant Messenger or Yahoo Messenger. But essentially, in the startup phase or in the early stage of, the, of virtualization, all the contact centers are completely separate. So there's no way for them to talk to each other. Again, the first thing you can do is maybe attach them all to the corporate WAN. Again, that's what we talked about. Maybe some instant messaging can happen in this configuration. Maybe you know email, those kinds of things. But again, these are still very separate entities with just a little bit of connectivity between them. All right, and again, this is just done with you know plain old routers, no special technology here. Now, this slide, number 11, is where you start to see the appearance of some dialogic product and some VOIP technology in order to allow these contact centers to actually talk to each other. And you can see here these blue boxes that appeared in the drawing. Okay, those are media gateways. Those are the those devices. You can see they have both a solid line connected to them, and they have a dotted line connected to them. And they are actually doing the translation from PDM voice over to VOIP. And just through this step, just by drop, and I just want to make sure these are not routers. We actually have them. If you look in the drawing, they're sort of positioned in between the existing contact center infrastructure and the WAN. But that's just a, that's a, a construct to make it easier to see. But these are not the routers. These, could, these are just hanging on the same LAN, and they understand how to translate TDM traffic to VOIP and back.